poor Paddy Maguire. A fourteen-hour day he worked for years. It was he that lit the fire and boiled the kettle and gave the cows their hay. His mother, tall, hard as a Protestant spire, came down the stairs barefoot at the kettle call and talked to her son sharply. Did you let the hens out, you? She had a venomous drawl and a wizened face like moth-eaten leatherette. Two black cats peeped between the banisters and gloated over the bacon fizzling pan. Outside the window showed tin canisters. The snipe of dawn fell like a whirring stone, and Patrick on a headland stood alone. The pull is on the traces. It is March, and a cold black wind is blowing from Dundalk. The twisting sod rolls over on her back. The virgin screams before the irresistible sock. No worry on Maguire's mind this day, except that he forgot to bring his matches. Hop back there, Polly. Hoy back. Whoa, way. From every second hill a neighbor watches with all the sharpened interest of rivalry. Yet sometimes when the sun comes through a gap, these men know God, the Father, in a tree. The Holy Spirit is the rising sap, and Christ will be the green leaves that will come at Easter from the sealed and guarded tomb. Primroses and the unearthly start of ferns among the blackthorn shadows in the ditch, a dead sparrow and an old waistcoat. Maguire learns as the horses turn slowly round the witch is witch of love and fear and things half born to mind. He stands between the plough handles, and he sees at the end of a long furrow his name signed among the poets, prostitutes. With all miseries, he is one. Here with the unfortunate who for half moments of paradise pay out good days and wait and wait for sunlight woven cloaks. Oh, to be wise as respectability that knows the price of all things and marks God's truth in pounds and pence and farthings.